Okie dokie, ladies and gentlemen. You got questions? I've got some answers. Question number one. What exactly is a market adjustment? Is this something that I'm seeing now that's new? Well, actually, market adjustments have been around for years and years and years. Typically, we only see them on fast-moving products. And a market adjustment typically is where the dealer will add additional profit to the sale price of that vehicle, claiming that there's a shortage. And if you want it, you're going to have to pay extra for it. So market adjustments could be uh, you might see it as additional dealer markup, also known as ADM, additional dealer markup. And they might show $500, 1000 2500 It depends on the model. It could just say on the addendum label, market price adjustment because there's shortages. So ADM, additional markup, market adjustment. Those are the terms that you'll see in most cases. Um, you normally see that on vehicles that are in short supply, specialty vehicles. Many, many dealers were doing this during the height of uh, the pandemic, and they're still doing it today. Doesn't mean you have to pay them like it didn't mean you had to pay them way back then. What it means is they're asking for it. It's an ask. It's not a must. You can always try to negotiate the additional deal or markup, market adjustment, however you want to phrase it. You can always try to, to um, negotiate that off the price of the car. So market adjustments are nothing new, but there's nothing that really should be paid today except on the, on the uh, hardest to find vehicles or the uh, specialty type vehicles. Next question, please. Is asking the out-the-door price the first thing I should ask for before the test drive or when? You don't concern yourself with the price, the total price of a vehicle until you've decided that you want to buy that vehicle, that vehicle or that it is the vehicle that you're certain you want to buy. Uh, assuming that the numbers match what you had in mind. So what do I mean by that? If you go to a car dealership and there's a particular car you're interested in, you're not going to negotiate the price of the vehicle until you drive the vehicle, okay? Or you can take the tact that I won't drive the vehicle until I can make sure that it's at a price that I can afford. So I want to negotiate the price first. You can do it either way. My suggestion is to drive it first to see if you even like it. If it turns out when you drive it that you don't like it at all and that you wouldn't own it even if it were priced right, then what difference does it make what the price is? Does it make sense to spend an hour negotiating with the salesperson or the sales manager for a price and then drive the vehicle only to find out that it wasn't the vehicle for you? Drive the vehicle first, determine whether or not it's a vehicle that you could see yourself owning and living with. Once you've made that determination, then what you want to discuss is the out-the-door price. Now, let's, let's define the out-the-door price. The out-the-door price is the agreed-upon selling price less any discounts or factory rebates, plus any deal or installed accessories that you have agreed to, plus sales tax title, license, and most dealers charge a dock fee, not all dealers, but most dealers charge a dock fee. So it's the agreed upon selling price, less discounts, less any rebates, plus sales tax title, license, and dock fee, whatever that total number is, that is the out the door price. That's the price you want to negotiate on. You don't want to talk about payments. You want to talk about the out-the-door price as if you were going to actually write a check for that vehicle. So in my world, it's best to start negotiating that price after you've determined whether or not the vehicle is a vehicle that you can see yourself owning and living with. What's the next question we have here? What can you do with a 631 credit score? Well, what can you do with it? The first thing you'd probably want to do is try and raise your credit score. So let's talk about ways that you can raise your credit score in the short term. One, make on-time payments, okay? Don't be late on your payments. Always make 
on-time payments. So if it's due on the 20th of the month, get it there the 18th, 19th, no later than the 20th, because you don't want the bank ever reporting a payment is late. That's just going to keep bringing your credit score down. Pay down your revolving balances. Don't always just pay the minimum. Pay more so that you're actually paying the balance down. The lower you can get your balances, the more your credit score can go up because it shows that you're handling your credit obligations well and you're paying them off wisely. Don't close your oldest account. The older the accounts, the better for you. If all you have are short-term accounts, then that's not going to help your credit score. So if you have an account that's three or four years old, make sure you're making those payments on time, pay down the balance, and keep that account because you want to show history. You want to show longevity by doing those things that will help build back up your credit score. Diversify the type of accounts that you have. Most people just have credit card accounts, have credit cards, have um, uh, maybe take a small personal loan from a bank or a credit union. Get a car loan if you can. Now, with a 631 credit score, that makes it harder to get that car loan. Think about having a co-signer if you're a 631 credit score and you're looking to buy a car. Limit the number of new credit applications you make. If your credit score is on the lower end and banks see you trying to get more and more credit, that's that's a, a red flag to banks. If If they think that you're having difficulty handling your current credit obligations, they are going to be less predisposed to approve you for future credit obligations, and it's going to continue to bring your credit score down. So you want to have diversified credit obligations, but you don't want to have an excessive amount of those credit obligations. Dispute any inaccurate information that you might find on your credit bureau, and you are entitled to get a free credit bureau report every year. Take advantage of that. Get that credit report. Look at it. If there's any information that is inaccurate, contact the credit bureau, follow their rules and regulations on how you dispute anything, proceed to dispute the inaccuracies. And then also, you can become an authorized user on someone else's credit account. And what that does is it helps build up your credit score. So these are some quick tips on how to build up your credit score. Now, if you're a 631 credit score and you're trying to buy a vehicle, co-signer, co-borrower, somebody that has a much higher credit score than you, somebody that has uh, a longevity of credit history, um, could be an aunt, could be an uncle, could be a grandparent, could be a mother or your father, could be a sister or brother, okay, could be a close friend. Another way to help is to have a substantial down payment. If you're looking at a $20,000 car, for instance, well, maybe you should have $5,000 down. That gives a bank 5,000 reasons to approve you, and it gives the finance manager at the dealership a little bit of leverage to say to the bank, listen, they're putting down five grand. Can we move them up one tier in credit so that they can get a slightly better rate? Because the lower your credit score, the higher your interest rate. The, uh, the next tier up will lower your rate. So cash down can help you if you have a 631 credit score. So try and build back your credit history so that you can raise your score. Look for cash down or a co-borrower. And well, that should probably get you that vehicle that you're looking for. Hey, I'm going to continue to look through the comments, see if there's any other questions that I might be able to answer for people. And we're going to try and do this on a regular basis, if that's okay with you. Thanks so much for watching today.